Hey guys, it's me, Minecraft World. Uh, so, welcome back to Monkey Kid All Opponents, the annual series where I come up with a new opponent for every single Monkey Kid character. And this one has been in the works for quite a bit. Since Monkey Kid Season 4 came out quite a while ago, the specials came out quite a bit ago, and um, I would... and I have been working on this since Season 4 started, and yeah, I have also, if you want to know where you can watch Season 4, it's on a site called Happy Kids TV. It's a free streaming site, free streaming app that, I know the specials are there, I don't know if the entire season is there, but I know the specials are, and... I would recommend checking it out there. The first two seasons are obviously on Amazon Prime. I don't know if Season 3 is there or where Season 3 is on any streaming services, if it is on any streaming services here in the U.S., um, but I would recommend checking it out there. I have downloaded the Happy Kids TV app, and I watched Season 4 more than once. It was... well, I'm going to get my thoughts out of the way. This is probably the best season of the show. Actually, no, not probably is the best season of the show, at least from a writing standpoint. This is the best written that Monkey Kid has ever been. Sure, uh, season three has better action, until you get to the specials. Uh, season four's entire final battle one-upped almost every single action scene of the show prior, and it was... Absolutely glorious. Season 4 uh, probably has some of the best animation of the show, which obviously the show is freaking fantastic when it comes to the animation, but the character writing is what really stood out to me, since this is where the characters got to develop, and um, I can't help but compare it to how Ninjago handled uh, its most recent season. Not Dragons Rising, but Crystallized. Since... Uh, both are completely direct follow-ups of the previous season, and they handle themselves and they handle themselves very, very differently. Monkey Kid actually had really good consequences, actually affecting the characters on an emotional level, and actually being the motivation for MK throughout the majority of the season, and being like just being. A great example of how you use consequences, as well as setup and payoff. This season had really, really good setup and payoff, better compared to Crystallized. While yes, the writing is relatively similar, uh, the the execution is so much better. I plan to go into detail on that in a video essay at some point. I have two Monkey Kid related videos aside from this that I do want to do at some point, um, one of which is verse related, the other one is that video essay, as well as another video essay that I have an idea for in the future. Uh, but that's besides the point. Anyways, season four was overall amazing. It, it managed to stand us alongside season three, and then the specials came out and immediately topped it. And, yeah, I highly recommend checking out Season 4, as well as, if you have not watched Monkey Kid in its entirety, watch the entire show in its entirety. It is well worth your time, and one of the most underrated and slept-on uh, TV shows I've ever seen, and that is painful because this show has writing that is on the same level as Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm dead serious. Season 4 especially. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts out of, out of the gate. I really, really liked Monkey Kid Season 4. And yeah. Anyways, let's get on to the, um, the opponents. You guys know the rules. I'm not using Journey to the West anymore. Because uh, Monkey Kid diverged pretty heavily from Journey to the West, though ironically, Season 4 actually takes place in a scroll copy of Journey to the West. Well, um, kind of. It It's complicated, but I'd recommend, but 
like I'll probably get into that another time. Um, but yeah, season four, new opponents. Let's get into these. Also, I will not be going over any alts because there are so many to list, and at this point, it feels pretty redundant. Matchup number 24. Hama versus the Yellow Robe Demon. Avatar the Last Airbender versus Monkey Kid. Hail ancient powerful monsters that were once benevolent, even having a connection to one of the main characters' homes, the Celestial Realm and the Southern Water Tribe, both having left for the sake of those they care about. Both eventually begin to learn and practice a dangerous art, bloodbending and soul-consuming, with them eventually becoming monsters, but, fi but being finally defeated at the hands of the main female protagonist, Mei and Katara. Yeah, I don't really have much to say on this one. A lot of these I don't have much to say. There's only really two that I have that I have a lot to say on, but these I don't really have much to say. Also, there was one character I really couldn't find an opponent for. I probably will follow up with them once season five drops, and yes, season five is coming. But as for this, it's fine. Uh it's okay. Neither really do much, but it's it's okay. Yeah. Matchup number twenty-five: Niad versus Alie. It's May versus Niad, but they're ancient ancestors. Uh, it's it's also fine. Alie doesn't do much. Niad doesn't really show up, but like she shows up in crystallized, but doesn't do much. It, it it's okay. I'm okay with this. Matchup number 26. Shifu Sabodi versus the Ancient One. Monkey Kid versus TMNT 2003. Old, wise, powerful masters that served as the mentor, as the mentor's mentor, ultimately working as a new mentor for the next generation, being pivotal in facing the season's final boss. Come, kind of. Kind of. Um, yeah, again, not much to say, but this is... This is also fun. Uh, Shifu Sabodi was uh, probably one of my favorite characters of this season, and I do know the ancient one. I have seen more of TMNT 2003, and it's still pretty good. But yeah, this one's fun. I don't mind it, and yeah, it could work. Matchup number 27. This one I actually do have a lot to say on. The Curse of the Scroll versus the Core. Monkey Kid versus Amphibia. Powerful, trapped, created hive mind monsters that were both intended as a form of controlling the main villains, who both taunt and frighten the heroes and take on form slash take over the body of one of the, of one of the heroes, MK and Marcy, where they would serve as terrifying, powerful forces to be reckoned with, ultimately taking on a larger form and being killed in glorious fashion when the heroes come together as friends and unlock and the main character unlocks a new power, the monkey form and calamity form. Some of this is a bit stretchy, but yeah, and there was also the connection that these two also. Uh, intentionally get into the heads of their victims, ultimately uh, breaking them as as uh, as they go along. Uh, it's it's weirdly worded, but yeah, this one I actually have a lot to say on. This is probably this is my favorite matchup of this list, and one of my new favorite Monkey Kid matchups. Yes, it is not the best for the core, but I still really like this. Um, uh, and honestly, I feel like it could work, and you could tie that back to one of Azure Lion's matchups, which I will actually bring up later, um, but it's not the one I chose for this. That being said, I still really like it. What sells it to me is the dialogue potential, the interaction between the two. These two are really, these two have, uh, powerful god complexes, at least the core does, the core does, and the curse, honestly, you could have it as it breaking the core, tearing down its god complex as the core is trying to fight it off, ultimately having the curse win, since the core doesn't have a good way to put the curse down for good. It could take out the avatars, absolutely, but it wouldn't really have a good way to put it down. I could see the fight escalating from... Uh, Darcy versus Ink MK to the core's true form. Maybe it possesses an island and transforms it versus the curse's true form or the curse's manifestation 
and it ultimately leading to the core being destroyed. I I like this one. I and it's honestly really cool. Also, uh, I have a track name for it: "Squirrels of Calamity." Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Um, but yeah, I really like this matchup, and honestly, this is pretty based. Matchup number twenty-eight. Yellow Tusk versus Mungus. Monkey Kid versus Legends of Chima. Powerful, bulky elephant characters that were that are close friends to the season's antagonist, working alongside the powerful cat character, Azure Lion and Sir Fangar, and an arrogant bird character, Golden Pang and Vardy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the one I can find. Eh, it's fine. Giant mammoth characters, not too much going for it, but I it, it's the best I could think of for uh Yellow Tusk. Eh, I like it. Matchup number 29, Golden Pang vs. Sister Krang, or Krang 2. Monkey Kid vs. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Swift, bloodthirsty, monstrous antagonists who serve as helpers to the main antagonist, with both originally being trapped but later freed with the help of the heroes, ultimately leaving the fight alive and presumably not being showing up again. I don't know if Pang is going to show up again. I know Rise of the TMT is not really getting anything as far as I know, uh, but yeah. Again, this is pretty cool. This one actually could be uh, really, really interesting. These two are extremely bloodthirsty and violent, so you can actually lean into that with both with both also getting very arrogant. And the fight could actually be pretty bloody when you get down to it. Um, but yeah, not much to say. And finally, last but not least, matchup number 30, Kai versus the Azure Lion. Kung Fu Panda versus Monkey Kid. This is another one that I have a lot to say on. Two powerful, bulky, former benevolent warriors who were close to someone to someone from the Mentor's past, Ugwe and the Jane Emperor, who both left their side for opposing reasons, Kai due to power corruption and Azure due to, see, due to him seeing the Jane Emperor's wrongdoings, with both inevitably battling their former friend, eventually being banished slash killed. Both have a certain power that allows them to capture and control those who are affected, Kai being able to steal Chi and Azure being able to control the curse, both would use their powers to achieve their goals, escaping the afterlife in some capacity and ultimately capturing their mentors, Shifu and Sun Wukong, succeeding in their quest and defeating their former ally turned sworn enemy, Kai capturing Uwe's Chi, and as you're striking down the Jade Emperor, becoming the new Jade Emperor in the process. Both, after a long hard fight with the main character, would be struck down once the main character overloads their power, ultimately destroying them once and for all. Both contrast in that Kai had a much more selfish motive, wanting to take the power for he could wanted to take all the power he could for himself, whereas Azure had more selfless motives, wanting to help make the world a better place and do what he felt the Jade Emperor did not do. This is probably my favorite for Azure Lion, and I'm split between this being my favorite for Kai. Because uh, Kai also has Moro, and I like that one as well, though I also like Moro versus Macaque. Um... Azure Lion also had a lot of different options. Uh, there's Hearts from Dragon Ball Heroes, Andreas from uh, Amphibia, who I alluded to in um, in the Curse vs. Core segment, uh, Sir Fangar, which is a worse Among Us versus uh, Yellow Tusk, and uh, a lot of other matchups. But this is honestly my favorite. It works. It works really well and can actually allow for some debate. Though I think I want to say Azure should win. I want to say Azure should win. It's it's more. I'm leaning towards a Kai victory if we don't give him the Jade Emperor's power. But if we do, Azure I think could win. Um, but I honestly really don't. I honestly really don't hate this idea at all um neither really has a good way to put it down to put the other down actually so um like azure can be killed and i think kai not exactly but i would believe it but i feel like the most natural way to end this fight would be one of them getting captured and turned into their army ultron sigma style ultron versus sigma style um and yeah Honestly, I really like this idea. It's it it's awesome. I feel like I feel like the fight could actually be really really intense and pretty epic in scale. Um, but yeah, this one's awesome. And 
end of that was basically it. Um, season four didn't. Season four did introduce more characters than last season, but there, but there were two characters I didn't really make matchups for. One of them I couldn't really think of, though I have an idea for one later, for for them later, and the Jade Emperor, which um, I didn't really feel like searching for ideas for. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, season four was honestly really good, and a lot of these matchups I'm okay with. Though Chris vs. Corrin, Kai vs. Azure Lion, I really like. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what options you have in the comments. What are some? What were your favorites on this list? And yeah, take care. Peace. Also, please watch season four.